principal ITS UG campus, Dr. Somendu Bhattacharya, guests, faculty colleagues, media person and their students. Good afternoon. It's my proud program 1995, under the leadership of our mentor, guide, engineer, whose contribution to the academic fraternity has been recognized and acknowledged across the country, our honorable chairman, ITS Education Group, Dr. R.P. Uh, Chadassa, has grown from one institute to four campuses, hosting eight institutions, offering undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctor programs with strong industry academia interface and network, excellent infrastructure with a competent pool of all education from Sri Arpi Jadassa, our chief guest, Dr. Mr. Renato D. Castro, guest of honor, Mr. Bhagwan Kumari, director IT, Dr. Sunil Kumar Pandey, sir, Dr. Umang, to take their seats on the dais. India needs smart villages as 68% population is living in rural areas. But this fact does not indicate towards the less importance of urban development. Urban and rural patterns are integral part of our nation's landscape. Both ways of life are struggling and demanding for improvement, quality enhancement and betterment desperately. Before starting the session, we have tradition auspicious lamp lighting ceremony as a tribute to Mars Hussain. Now request all the dignitaries on the dais to do the lamp lighting before Mars Hussain. Now, request Director I.D. Dr. Sri Kumar Pandey, sir, to welcome our guest, Mr. Bhagwan Kumari, by presenting him a sample. Services advises 
to create smart cities and first particularly the Indian, Indian perspective not only the smart cities but the large part of the population about 67 million is specifically talking about information technology but definitely something which each of us are related to. So I welcome Vinatoli at ITS and now I, uh, I hand over this dash to you uh, for the presentation. session. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mr. <laughs> Chairman, thank you very much for sitting me here. Professor Sunil, it was a pleasure. We met a few, few days ago, but we are almost close friends now. That's the good thing about smart cities. I think everybody will talk about smart cities get excited. Let me do the final adjustments. Uh, you're going to stay here, guys, so I want to see you, I want to see my presentation. No, 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 I, I, it would be a pleasure, so I, I don't lose track. And I'm so happy because I'm going, they told me that I'm going to have at least half an hour. My last presentation, you can see that I like to speak, I had this talk since I was a child. My last presentation was last Saturday, a TED talk. Very nice, good experience, lighting, but 15 minutes. You have no idea how I get nervous when I have to speak few times. And, and you know, talking about smart cities, besides being very exciting, I love smart cities. I'm a very lucky guy. I've been trying, I'm really grateful to see that world is changing. And we are really trying to do something different. But I would like to start the presentation today. By the way, can you put the, the, the Facebook there? Instead of, so we can see if people is connecting and talking, talking a lot about smart city in Korea, in India, and what's exactly what I said, I, 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 I listened to, I saw some criticisms there about how much government is investing in smart cities here in India. So they started with 100 uh, cities, shortlisted for 20 cities, investing, I think, 15, 20 million dollars in the first project, in the first uh, round of investments of the project. Smart city is not being done by public governments anywhere in the world, maybe in, 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 in the Middle East, because they don't have people, they have just oil, they have money. The, the greatest, the biggest, the largest asset India has to do smart cities are people. We have people, we have consumers. So who will drive the smart cities projects in India will be, drive, will be the private sector. What we have to do is really to create a safe environment for our international investments. And that's what I work with. So I'm so positive about this Smart City project in India because of things. You have a bright future for Smart Cities. And you that are now studying, you are really, it's really, really a good time to position yourself if you want to be part of this new world or the last world. It took us almost one, million, one billion time to start having life in Earth. Earth aged more or less 4.5 billion years. Just 3.5 billion years ago, I mean, one year, uh, one uh, uh, history of our planet. So, nowadays we are talking a lot about, about disruption. Disruption is a, is a is the fancy word. I remember when I was a child, disrupt, disruption and disruptive was uh, a quality that professors were telling me that it was the disruption guy there in, in, in school. And believe me, this was really a bad company. I was, it was a seven, uh, my, my Facebook, following my Facebook, and, and I got to this video that, can you imagine, it was, I, I was already in Kuala Lumpur, I saw this really strange uh, video, I had no audio, and the video was, was showing uh, uh, a piece of meat that was connected to a device. And for me, I swear, I thought it was a, like a barbecue express device to do barbecue. It was really strange. So, caught my attention, I stopped it, I clicked in the video, and I, and I saw this video. We're looking at Oscar, the first human modular prototype that is able to live in a very set. What's going to happen is that I'm going to connect the brain to the heart module to activate the blood circulation. Now, the lung is going to start breathing. You can see both organs are now collaborating. I can add the kidney module. 
And if I have a lead module, it's that actuating the organism to move. Now it's looking for the optimum temperature, which is 37 degrees. If I have another limb, Oscar will recognize it and beneficiate from the solution. That they have already done all these, these organs, these mini organs, are 3D printed. This is not a, a, a new thing. We, we knew and we are already doing 3D printings of, well, the different parts of, not connected parts but different parts of our body and they claim that they got to do the first human body prototype, modular form prototype. It's not a matter if they got it or not, it's just a lot of problems due to the migration that we I even jumped at this slide because you know better than everybody in the world the problem that we are facing with urban migration. If you don't have the, the updated numbers and I'm sure you have because you listen every day about it. For the next 30 to 50 years, we are expecting an immigration, internal immigration, domestic immigration in India of 300 million people coming from the countryside to the cities. Doesn't matter the size. I, I, from now on, I will just call village or city. Village or whatever, village, city, town or city, and cities will be the, the mega cities we have. It doesn't matter. It's a big problem. Can you imagine adding all this problem with needing more time. The graphic before was showing that in 1916 we had 1.8 billion without any uh, uh, or very few people without any opportunity or one, without any possibility. So when you talk about smart cities and that I have a, a, an article written just this month published in the Business World magazine here in India. Was very pleasant to have my article in the magazine exactly explaining this. Well, maybe solution for India is not just talking about smart cities, but also start discussing about the year got 79 people per hour. We are going to stay here two hours today, so probably 160 people are arriving there to stay. And then, you see that this is a trend, even, even old cities like London are attracted. And understand, some people because they are hungry. Some people are migrating because they don't have any any uh, possibility of leaving the place they live. But a lot of people are migrating just to have a better life. Young people are migrating to get more opportunities. When I was born in Rio, maybe my reality was just my reality was isolated. Whatever or whoever it is now in what we call millennials, they are already connected. They look if we bring this back then to the village, maybe they will not be great because social integration they already have, they have, they have it online. That's the good thing about online. Everybody has an avatar living a very cosmopolitan life online. Doesn't matter where you live. What we need to do is this life there. Some numbers about this problem we have in the, in the urban migration. Thank you to solve this problem. We don't die because of traffic congestion. But when it comes to health, according to Lancet, 95% of the world population, in average, is sick. It means that in India, we have more than 1 billion people with at least one kind of disease, and in the world, 7 billion. 7 billion. 10% of these people are kids. Just this year, we had already 200 million people that died by the world is connected. Also the pandemias are getting really more constant and faster. We have the, the, the birth flu in, in, in Asia, and then two years ago we had the Ebola in Africa, and they, this year we have the Zika virus in South, in South America. I, I was reading in The Economist, one, one research, that if they take just 5% of all the, 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 the money that we are now investing in, in, in security here in India. Can we put more schools inside New Delhi? We have space for this. We have free areas, probably not in big cities. Solution is not the same matrix that we have been doing for the last hundred years. We need more, we build more. 
We, we, we had more cars, we put more, uh, uh, built more roads. We had space for roads? No. Cities are already all, all, all uh, 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 built. And as more we build, the less quality we have. So smart solutions are coming to solve these problems. Or at least to try to mitigate these problems. And talking about this, a lot of, a lot of people were coming. This is a disruption. Can you imagine your kids do not know how to write? And I, I got a lot of positive, I tried to be neutral, positive and, 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 and negative. And there was a, a guy that did a very good remark, saying, look, imagine at the beginning of the century, the car was already a reality, but since we were a child, we were uh, learning how to ride a horse, because we need to ride a horse when we were adults, even when we were a child. So the dialogue would be like this, okay, you can have a car, but it's too wild to ride a horse. Probably, I had a very long discussion with my wife about this, about our kids at home, my wife is very traditional, traditional, and probably it's better for me to teach my kids how to swim than how to ride. Because if water is water everywhere in the world, but if my kids write in Italian, if they come to me, they don't do anything. Again, I'm not saying if it's right or wrong, I'm just saying that we, we are really looking for new solutions that are out of the box, that can bring scalability to solve problems. To solve this problem, we were supposed to build, at least in 2016, 100,000 schools for 500 kids each school. We cannot, we don't have effort, we don't have uh, resources, and probably we don't have political orientation to do this. Maybe the solution is not this. Maybe the solution is not physical. Maybe the solution is a mixture between physical solution and also digital solution. I was, I was in the beginning of the year, in January, end of January, I was in, in, in uh, Seoul, in Korea, visiting a very nice project called Songbu. The first smart city built from scratch that is, is working functionally. 70,000 people live in the earth. Kids are studying, they have a video conference in the in whole apartment. All apartments have video conference. In school they have, they have classes with professors from Hawaii, English classes. You know the kids? the alpha generation, they behave better when they are interacting with, the, with a, a camera. So the, school, the teacher is there, talking from Hawaii, they are sitting down, watching, uh, having the class, that, that the class in, in English. They behave better when they, they are in front of a camera than when they have a real teacher. Because they know that the camera is 360, they, someone is, is controlling them. They are so used to technology. Well, they are, they are getting English, uh, sessions after school also at home. Professors are interacting with them after home, uh, after school at home with video conference. Maybe technology is never will never be the ending, but maybe it's a good means to start solving our problems. <coughs> so, what's being done? First of all, we have been discussing today a lot about smart city definitions. I, I was there with the minister now starting the, 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 the expo in, the, in, in Delhi. And everybody was trying to come with a definition for smart cities. And well, I, I'm doing my doctorate now. I have written already 200 pages just for the literature review for smart cities. And they started basically talking about smart cities in the 80s in the state. And the, 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 uh, the thing is like, no, raising your hands and hello, you really, are you really living the same, in the same you know, uh, world that you are living? Creative economy, sharing economy, are shaping the world. We are changing completely. Uber is a reality. I took a Uber today to come to the, to the, to, to go to the, to the event. I, I work in smart cities, so I try my best to try all the, the, the mobility uh, in the city. I love the concept of Uber, disruptive. Disruption. It's changing. It's the, it started a few years ago. It's the largest world com taxi company and, do, and it doesn't own one company. Airbnb, Airbnb and a lot of companies to come. The future, they just released two weeks ago uh, a, a, a new saying that this year they are already coming with something. So they will be transmitting energy to my cell phone. I'll be buying this energy that will be in there. Can you imagine how it will disrupt the whole concept we have, the whole economy? So smart city must be really aligned with this. And again, one part of the sharing... Okay. Because you won't see anything like us. In just 10 years from now, we'll be buying and influencing buying in ways that will confound you. We won't just watch your ads. We'll expect smart, tailored content based on our social graphs. Tailored? 
and you are in railway station, wherever you get to the railway station platform, you are in bus station, wherever you get to the bus. Similarly, take it to the next level where yes. something is moving. From the perspective, from the security perspective, from more citizen centric services, we provide hospital capabilities to provide water, gas, and uh, electricity very easily and have control both ways, sending events not just one direction, they connecting, but also you can disconnect, subscribe, get the measurements, set the forecast. And these are kind of connected ambulances from in terms of public safety. So that is smart to this platform. An effective integration of physical, digital, and of course human in the built environment to deliver a sustainable, prosperous, and inclusive future for its citizens. I quickly go through these are things which are, which are happening, and one of my, my my startups is part of the Smart City Governance Council. We are trying to create a governance framework in what is happening in India. So in India, we are looking at uh, land record modernization program, watershed management, food grain security, and supply chain management, disaster prediction and recovery, disaster prediction and prevention, groundwater quality, medical service delivery. Primary rural healthcare service, public property safety improvements, personal monitoring, and remote sensing. The risk management framework is a classic framework where, uh, similar to disaster prediction or disaster prevention, where we try to identify, assess, analyze, plan, action, and monitor, implement, and measure control. It's almost like predicting, predicting what is going to happen. Try to prove. Let's say there is a traffic congestion. We are talking from the threat level one, where you don't want to get stuck into a traffic or get into an accident area. So you see the traffic congestion. You try to, from the when you are giving the directions, you avoid that particular whole area to move it into the next. So let's say there is a cyclone which is going to happen. Let's say there is a chance that it, there, is, there is an earthquake and there is a tsunami is going to happen, right? So you take it to the next level, like tornado, and let's say the geomagnetic storm in the, in, the, in the flight. All these are predictable. Let's say you have that level of predictability, like you have a span of a day, an hour, or two hours. How do you go about using that information to send it to a person, person who is located, is about to enter that area, to prevent him to get, to get into that area? So that, that's the level of prevention we want to get. You want to predict and you also want to prevent the person not to get into the game. Okay. So how do we do it? So pre-disaster phase, these are the key things we look at. Prevention, mitigation, preparedness, and we have the capacity to handle across India. And it has to be 24 by 7. And post-disaster, this is the more proactive thing which most of the time happens. So we have to worry about that. We have to have a prompt and efficient response, reconstruction and recovery, disaster prevention, prediction and identification of disasters, disaster control mechanism, disaster relief, and plan control of any possible after effect of a disaster. This is the Digital India Initiative, which we are looking at like land record modernization, land record industry, citizen setting services, IT industry, company checks, land record industry, land record industry. So this is the one concept which I was telling you about the smart village. Most of the time we talked about smart city or smart town. A smart village will consist of institutions, will consist of uh, village, village panchayats, regulations, state governments, we have NGOs. From a transportation perspective, we will have bus and a truck, IT and mobile networks, we have food courts, we have e kiosks, post office based services like online ticket booking, retail equipment, warehousing and marketing. And from a resources perspective, we worry about land resources, land records, water energy, health, legal health records, human resources, financial resources. And the bottom, we have all the citizen centric uh, services like education, retail, water, rural employment, farming, and small medium enterprises. This is just an example which I want to present. Recently, I was in Andhra Pradesh. 
uh, CM Chandrabhav and I who presented this approach for the whole smart cities where you want to think the whole state as an incubator for smart cities. And you want to run the Andhra Pradesh as a state government like company which will become one million dollars. Guess who is investing in, in this initiative? Any guesses? To make Andhra Pradesh one million dollar company. Any guess who is going to invest? Companies? Any ideas? He is actually going to the citizens directly, the farmers, and they are going to invest the land, and he is promising 4x and 5x. So it's almost like investment right from the scratch, zero, taking it to the level where the citizens and farmers pull in land and money. <coughs> And he is promising a 4x to 5x of 8 years for the state running as a company and he is treating that whole state as an incubator. I just wanted to present that as an example because I was there. So, in a smart village, you have level 1 village without connected infrastructure, like off grid areas, where you have free water, energy, waste, and other things. There is technology enabled, green related. Level 2 is ready infrastructure. Right? If you take the level one, really surprise, right? We see a lot of things happening in Dubai, but when you really go there, you, you actually see a smart city solution really happening. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised as a citizen that Dubai is already in the level of smart city. They are measuring the satisfaction, the client satisfaction index, how people feel about the smart city. So I just wanted to share this demo. Like for example, in the case of coastal zone monitoring, you can actually have the live cameras, feeds. So Monday to Wednesday, time now, we much can see how to buy a transform. Similarly, you have the live cameras where you can see the actual traffic in the various uh, areas. And this is the coastal. You have flight information, weather, and so on. So this was the <coughs> first attempt, more than a perspective presenting the demo. There are a lot of evolved solutions where uh, there are IoT clouds, where you have devices like smart buildings, smart home, like for example, <coughs> Part of the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, which comes under the Department of Telecom. So you are all interested in participating at India level to make this smart city or smart village, smart town successful. Feel free to send in your ideas to make your country successful. Thank you. An experience with all of us. Now request Honorable Vice Chairman ITS Education Group Shri Akhil Chadasa to present memento to Mr. Rinaldi Castro as a token of remembrance. Thank you, sir. Now request Director and Dr. Speak Kumar Pandey, sir, to present memento to Mr. Bhagwan Kumari as a token of remembrance. Now you miss Dr. Omar to deliver a vote of thanks. Delegates, media representatives, faculty members, and my dear students. From the outset, I, on behalf of organizing team and department of IT, ITS Mohanagar Ghaziabad, express my deep sense of regard to eminent guests for accepting our invitation in spite of their busy and committed schedule. And grace this ambitious event by sharing their views, vision from today to future. So, giving us an excellent coverage to the concept of smart cities and smart villages. I also wish to express my gratitude to Mr. Bhagwan Kumari, Group CTO, Voice on Technologies, and Founder Architect Corner for spending time and being with us in this section with this wonderful talk. Finally, Thanks to the person under whose able guidance, mentorship, and encouragement, 
we have been able to do us to organize this event on a very short notice and providing the support and guidance whenever it was required we are also thankful to the participating delegates faculties and the students to make this event a grand success we look forward to your continuing with us today thank you Uh, thank you, ma'am. It was really.